Welcome back. So in this video tutorial, so we'll be focusing on C++ implementation of the Q implementation out of two stacks. So for Java solution, you can watch the third part of this video. Okay, so let's name the Q uh, header as Q dot header. Okay, we'll use uh, IO stream. And then for the STL, I mean for the stack, we would be using STL stack. Okay, namespace std. Okay, the class name is Q. Okay, and we would need stacks, integer stacks. Okay, old stack, and the other stack we'll call it as new stack. Okay, and then we would need a top element. Okay, and then uh, we would also need size. Okay. And let's have the public functions. We will start with the constructor. So constructor in this case, uh, actually we can initialize top element with minus one and size also with minus one. Right. Okay. And uh, in the destructor, probably we need to free up the entries that are available in the old stack, if there are any. So we can check if old stack is not empty, right? So probably we would need a while loop, right? Okay, when this is uh, the case, we can remove the pop the entries from the old stack, okay? So same thing we can do for the new stack as well. If it is not empty, we can remove it from the new stack. So far, so good, right? So now we can actually think of the NQ DQ functionalities. So the NQ functionality probably we can now uh, to indicate if there is a failure or success. So we can have a bool and uh, let's name the NQ function like this and uh, let it accept a element, some integer value. Okay. And then um, let's our DQ return a integer okay and then it doesn't have to take any input okay then uh, we can have a is is empty function so is empty function will return true if it is empty otherwise false right and then a size size function which will return the size of the queue okay so now let's implement the nq function okay uh, q scope resolution nq int element right and then over here uh, probably we can have a flag be written flag that is true initially initially and then uh, let's try and then we'll see uh, okay so we are going to desire we decided in the first part that we are going to insert the new entries from the for the queue into the new stack right so we, we can directly push it. That's it. We can catch if there are any exceptions here. And then over here, we can say be written is equal to false, right? Over here, we can return whether it is successful or a failure. So in case of uh, failure, so probably we can have some message, some error error occurred okay that uh, completes our nq functionality so we can go ahead with the dq functionality right so over here we need to check so we need to right we need to check if old stack is empty if the old stack is empty then we can fill the old stack from the new stack while new stack while not new stack is empty so that we have some entries in the new stack so we can use the member variable 
so which to store the top element new stack dot top will uh, return the top most uh, entry in the new stack and then we can directly push that into the old stack top element right and then now we need to remove pop that entry from the new stack having a bracket would uh, help things help us avoid some er errors right so now it looks better okay or here again we can check if old stack is not when old stack is not empty right so we can when this is not empty uh, we can retrieve the top element old stack dot top okay and then uh, we can before we uh, basically return we can pop that entry from the old stack so we popped it right so yeah and then we can return return top element so one way to do that is so probably we can have single entry single exit so top element we can ensure it is minus 1 so though it is initialized uh, in the constructor we can ensure double check that it is uh, minus 1 otherwise it is uh, retrieved uh, we retrieve the proper value and then we return we can return here top element right so just to indicate uh, when the queue is empty so over here we can say queue is empty is empty right okay now so we are done with the nq we are done with the dq so let's go ahead with the size okay size so size is pretty simple so we can retrieve the old stack size and then add that with the new stack size right and then we can return that size we should not be using any local variable otherwise the local uh, variable will be destroyed before the caller retrieves the size and uh, on the same note so we can implement the empty is empty function is empty function basically if uh, we need to check if uh, old stack is empty old stack is empty and uh, new stack is empty if both are empty only then the queue is empty right so we can return a true else we can return a false right so now we are done with the implementation of the queue so we can try to use this right so we need to include the queue header that we just now created and uh, we'll create a pointer we'll construct the queue and we'll check if uh, things went well right okay uh, if it is a uh, null probably we can uh, say error creating queue right and then we can return a minus 1 to indicate uh, it's a failure to the operating system okay if the control reaches here we know that i mean we were able to create the object right so we can have probably have a loop so let's say uh, we'll start with 1 and then we will enter some five values right so okay and uh, let's multiply that uh, by 10 so that it looks good good to our eyes yeah fine so we have inserted uh, some values so probably uh, we can print some messages okay so we'll say inserted okay i into 10 into the queue okay 
fine maybe we can have another end line here right so we have inserted some values now let's try to dequeue while dequeuing okay so let's try this equal to one less than six plus plus i so probably we can uh, use the size now right so int size equal to pq dot size size okay and uh, we can use that size here okay we can dequeue now when dequeuing we will print it dequeue DQ and uh, that's it. Fine. Maybe here we can have another end line. Okay. Fine. So let's return. So the function that we have not used is uh, empty. So we can check. PQ is empty, right? So we can have a bool, bool B is empty equal to this. So we can say if uh, is empty, then we know we need to print Q is empty. Q is empty. else q is an empty okay let's compile main and see how it goes okay we have uh, one error in line number 39 39 okay so this is end line okay fine yeah so no errors so initially q is empty and then we inserted 10 20 30 40 and 50 and uh, we seem to have dequeued only up to 40 so we'll see what is the problem so the problem is not in the queue implementation i believe it should be in the main okay so because in the size so we are saying less than and then um, less than uh, size is not a problem so over here actually we started with a one that's a problem right yeah so things are working fine so let's review the code once again okay so we included io stream for a c c out and uh, I mean, we are not using we are not using CN, but anyway, so C out is coming from IO stream, and uh, this is the STL uh, stack header. We are using STD namespace. Fine. So we are given with uh, two stacks. So we in, uh, two integer stacks, old stack and new stack, and top element for our uh, temporary purpose. I mean, for retrieving uh, elements and uh, pushing into for all those purpose we will be using this and then size to store the size to retrieve the size in the size variable fine and uh, in the constructor we initialized uh, top element and size to minus one and uh, in the destructor we are ensuring if uh, old stack has some entries we pop out and uh, new stack has some entries we pop out that that's it to avoid memory leaks right and uh, we defined uh, we declared uh, nq dq empty is empty and size functions we defined those functions like this here so nq accepts a integer element and we try to push that element in case of exception so we set the b rate as false otherwise it's going to be true so we return the if it is successful it is going to be true fine so and then uh, okay so we have the DQ functionality. So in the DQ functionality, so what we do, we ensure top element is initialized to minus one 
and then only when the old stack is empty so we fill the old stack from the entries from the new stack so we retrieve the topmost element from the new stack we push the top element into the old stack and then we ensure the top element is uh, re removed from the new stack that's it now over here we are we if uh, old stack has some entries we retrieve the topmost entry and then we we have to basically return return that right so we are returning in the bottom so if this is this condition is false which means old stack is empty so i mean basically q is empty so we print out a message q is empty so remember our users the client of this uh, q class shouldn't be aware that we are internally using stack so all our messages are only for the from the user point of view it is a q so we say q is empty and then we return the top element here or here so we are retrieving old stack size and new stack size and adding that and returning the size fine and uh, is empty we we know that if both the stacks old stack and uh, new stacks are empty we know it is uh, we need to return a true otherwise we need to return a false looks good okay so this ends our second part of the video to watch the java solution you can watch my third part thank you if you are interested in watching more such uh, problems you can actually subscribe to my channel thank you